Mmm, delicious cake. I hope it's Red Devil's food. Vanilla? Ouroboros. Or is it Ouroboroi? Actually, I don't think this counts. But then again, could there be such a thing as a plural for an Ouroboros? I mean, if it is the great unending chain of infinitude, then it's without end. There can't be more than one, right? Mmm, smells like carrot. Related to carrot. But don't eat it, kids. This is the poison that made the concoction that killed Socrates. Don't believe me? Look it up. Do you see this nasty stuff? Kill it. What's it like to be a goldfish? Uh-oh, he's doing that philosophy thing again. He must be amid existential crisis. We're all amid existential crisis. I don't just think about it when I stare into a pool of water. You, me, everybody. This whole place, everything you see is gone! We're all gonna die. But what is it like to be a goldfish? Remember Thomas Nagel's uh, essay? Oh, I don't think, uh, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between likes. It's not really something you can compare the state of one conscious experience to another. I'm not, I'm not convinced of it anyways. But one thing's for sure about what it's like to be a goldfish. You are functioning at severely diminished cognitive capacity, at least from that to which I'm accustomed. But then again, so are a lot of people, right? I wonder with respect to neurology, I wonder what feels more pain, a fish or a snake? I mean, they're both pretty far down the spectrum, right? I'm gonna go with, I think a snake still feels a little bit more. But in both cases, you can kind of look into their eyes and it's just vacant. Nobody's home. Here's my mix. It's really nice and fluid. And it's to patch this, which I've already acid treated. Man, is it annoying. Hydrochloric acid, muriatic acid. It etches it. And then, you know, you rinse it out real well and make sure it's neutralized and then blow it off with compressed air. That makes a nice prepped surface to fix these pock marks. And here I'll show you the recipe that I use. I wrote it in, ch in chalk on the floor. Oh, whoa, adjust. I wrote it in chalk on the floor because I've learned in the, from the past, from my past experience that once I find a formulation that I like, write it down, at least temporarily. This is three parts thin set, the white stuff, but the color is incidental. Three parts type S premix, which is basically a, a premix mortar brick for bricks. It's just sand and type S for the most part. Or sand and Portland cement. Third ingredient, one part Portland, that makes it nice and hard. So the properties are this gives it a, a plasticity, this gives it a body, and this gives it a hardness. And for all of you internet expert know-it-alls out there, it's not that important. None of the recipes are that important. Um, if you get something even close to what I used there, it will work. I did this several months ago. A similar preparation, and it's held up nicely. In fact, I've patched my floor with all sorts of things in the past, and I've never really had anything pop up, as long as you prep it, uh, prepare it well. But even in some cases, I don't. Like for these marks, in this case, this is just leftover auto body putty, and it hasn't popped up yet, and I didn't even clean that out well. I've been fighting to repair it and restore it so that I, because everything's on casters in here and the camera dolly too. So it's like bumping it or rolling it down a bumpy driveway and it gets annoying. In this case, I just used bag quickcrete. 
what was this? It was a floor drain at the beginning. And I filled it with rubble because I was lucky enough to move into a place that had a rubble pile in the back. Yes, that's sarcasm. I threw some of the rubble in first and then uh, poured some concrete over top of it all. If we come around to the other side, you can see that I did leave some of the floor drain intact. I stopped my concrete there and there's, oh, I don't know, four, four feet or so. And it's right underneath the garage door, so it's still pretty practical. These are some particularly annoying spots because I want to move this router table here, I think. I really like the miter saw front and center, but I can't have these saw horses forever. I'm going to have to make some kind of stand. Remember April made one? I want to make one like that. Uh, I'll put a link in the destruct this, you know. It's easy to overwater. So, you definitely want to start dry. And then I like to use a sprayer to get me to, to that fine tuned place, you know? I know this is bizarre, but I like that smell. The combination of the three makes a really great mix. It's friendly, friendly to use. It's funny, I still have an old pair of jeans on. You know, I wear these old work jeans with a hole. I patch them occasionally. Some of them are, I patch them beyond their reasonable limit. It's surprising how few people have ever commented about it. But in anticipation of critical comments over it, I went out and bought, I don't know, 10 or 12 new pairs. And I still end up wearing these. <laughs> so, this old paint can is cut to the you know same size as the margin trowel. That is not a coincidence. If you've never made yourself one of these, you absolutely must. It's goodness if I don't have 40 of them on site. I also leave some with the handles attached. That's a nice sticky mix, that'll do. Here's the satisfying part, at least for me. I mean, if you don't find this satisfying, you and I just aren't on the same page. There's some chunks in there. No problem, I'll get them out. It's just a concrete floor, we're not icing a cake here. Speaking of which, the cake, the story with that. So, Mrs. Pocket made a delicious cake. Wait, hold on. Let's put you on this thing. So, Mrs. Pocket made a delicious cake. And it smelled wonderful when I smashed it, by the way. That's because she put almond extract in it. But after she had baked the cake, she realized it smelled a little off. What's going on? She checked the package and the icing was expired. So we thought at first maybe we could just replace the icing, 
but the smell was too bizarre. It, it, it was kind of like a uh, vegetable oil that had turned and it just wasn't right. That'll be good for now. I'll probably come back later and give it a better smoothing, but let's let it set for now. No doubt some of you are angry over the snake too. I try to preserve them. Spare me the ecology lectures though, because they are not good for the ecology. That's nonsense. They eat very little and they're apex predators which means that they have a very low value to the environment. Producers are more important. So spare me those platitudes. Well, the snake, I lifted up something and I had him cornered in a place where he couldn't be and he was aggressive, and even though he was a harmless snake, I, don't, I just can't tolerate aggressive ones that are right there by my shop. So what's it like to be a snake behind Pocket's shop? Well, it's great if you're friendly, but a friendly snake, I mean, is there such a thing really? And that's it for the first batch. What's so great about working with this stuff is that it's so it's so thin. The aggregate is so thin. It's just sand. So you can feather it out to you know a very very small thickness. I hope you can see that. Um these like these little marks here, they're a sixteenth of an inch thick, or deep rather, and it will take, it will hold. Like I said, I've, I've tried a lot of different formulations over the years and something like what I'm using here seems to be my favorite. Seems kind of sticky today, though. That's all right. Another thing to consider is that later. Oh, that helps. You can come back and stone it with an old uh, abrasive wheel. Or wait, I'll show you. Hold on. This. It's an old grinding wheel. Don't throw one away when it gets worn out. Honestly, they're cheap enough though that you can just buy one and then break it or cut it on the wet saw, believe it or not. It cuts like butter. You can use this to smooth down your bumps later. And I may, but honestly, your just foot traffic will smooth this down eventually. Okay, I have to go mix some more. You and I were going to go today into the woods and cut some wood. Kind of an interesting occurrence in the back there. I had a tree get hung up in another tree. I didn't film it because it was too dangerous and I didn't want to hear the lectures, but it wasn't really dangerous. It was a calculated risk. But I needed to go back and um, get the harvest the firewood, but I don't want to because my foot isn't fully healed yet. And I don't want to do so much hard work. Boy, this new place has been just so much work and it, it has affected my energy. It's hard to keep my energy up. Um, I've actually lost quite a few pounds of muscle mass just because I don't exercise properly anymore. Which doesn't really affect my health, it affects the health of my pride though. This is too wet. 
well, as I was saying, there was a dead tree fell over the trail and it landed in the Y of another like this. And so I tied off on this tree with my harness. Well, I took one of those slings and wrapped it around the tree, like those old loggers of the 40s on, in the great sequoia dropping, something like that. I used two slings just to be sure, and I wanted a backup, especially because the slings were used for like abusive things and not for climbing. But my thinking was, if I was above the tree, then I could chainsaw it out, and it can't hurt me because it's only going to fall down. So I really was suspended from nothing but the tree, chainsawing something underneath me. It went without a hitch. Uh, you know, I, I thought carefully about what I was doing with each step. That's what you have to do if you're not a professional, is go slow and carefully consider each move. Okay, now we're a little too dry. But another thing that I've been doing a lot of work on back there is the, the trail itself. Lots of trail work. One of the neighbors has given me access to a, an unusable, like an, an inexhaustible amount of natural tree bark. So I've been hauling it up and putting it on the trails and it makes a soft surface for... The, the, the problem is that there's some, there's probably three quarters of a mile of trail. I mean, it just goes every which way, and, and that's so much work to maintain. And so, as I was saying, the type of work that I'm doing, it's, it's, it doesn't build, it doesn't make me strong. It just wears me down. It's just exhausting work that eh, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating a fact that I'll what it's actually, what my life is like at this point. Sometimes there are different types of work and they accomplish different things, you know? And the most, the most shallow, empty work of all is that kind of, just almost explicit, explicitly self-centered work that's not creative and it's only aimed at uh, improving your physical health. Now, to a, to a point, you, you know, like cardiovascular health, notwithstanding, I mean, that's so important. But to a point, your physical health is very, very important, but it quickly becomes this bizarre obsession over appearance where You're not impressing anybody. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares if you're good looking or not. So you have to strike that balance. And where you ex where you especially want to back off the the uh, exercise for making yourself look healthy is when it starts to affect your productivity. If it, if it costs you productivity, then you're just being self-indulgent. But it's tough, you know, you don't want to say, you, you, you feel like you're being self-indulgent when you say, no, I can't, I have to go to the gym. But if you aren't committed, and especially if you aren't on a, uh, like a routine, it can be really hard to maintain physical health. So it's a tough problem, no doubt. Uh, sorry, I left you out of a lot of it. I didn't, I was kind of in a hurry, so I didn't want to prattle on.
Why was I in a hurry? Because there was some kind of grit in it. I, I don't know. Maybe the Portland is getting too old and there are little pea gravel things in it. Because my preparation was clean, but there were, you can see some of them, it's dragging. I'm not exactly in a panic here, it's just not as smooth as I would have hoped for. But that's what you get when you use old stuff. If you've never used a, a float before, it's not as easy as it looks. So in your mind you think, oh, you just drag it across it and it'll be smooth. But then when you, the first time you try to use one, it doesn't go that way. <laughs> you have to apply a pressure, like you have to bend it. So when I'm doing this part, I have my float down here, like I'm pressing on that corner. I'm lifting up so that it skis across, and I'm lifting up this way so that this corner doesn't dig. It's ap appropriately named, float. You do just, and skim is another verb that really makes a lot of sense. You skim the float across. In this, when I go this way, I'm applying pressure to this corner. And then, of course, you're not supposed to do that, but it helps. This is a different mix. This is not concrete. I'll spend, oh, I don't know, the next hour or two looking over it and coming back and floating the top just to get it nice and smooth. Uh, this is where you and I part ways though because my battery's about to die and I want to finish this and some other things. So see you next time. Good morning. It's the following day and we'll take a look at that and how it turned out in just a moment. But first, take a look at this part, which I didn't do yet. Now let's compare to the part that I did yesterday. Nice and smooth until it gets over there. You can get thin set in gray. I used white. It doesn't matter because I'm going to paint this all gray eventually. So don't think that this looks awful. The point is to get it flat. You can't really mess this up. I would invite you to try it. It's easy. This morning I came out and I stoned it a little bit and it put a dust over the whole top and then I sprinkled some, well no, first after I stoned it, I swept it up and then I misted the whole thing with water. Then I sprinkled on just some Portland cement and I scoured it around using an old piece of uh, foam rubber and it kind of acts like a small crack filler and a stain to get it a little more gray. Not that it matters, but overall, not bad. Hopefully something in here was useful to you or informative in one way or another. And we'll see you in the next project. I guess the camera dolly's the final test, right? That's way better than it was before. Let's see.